In today's video, we're going to be going over the upcoming temperature pattern as well as diving into every single model that I have access to. We're going to be going over every single one of their snowfall totals through the next 7, 10, and 15 days. Some of them vary in how far out they go, but we're going to be going over every single one for both of the potential upcoming snowstorms in the east. Real quickly, let's talk about my consulting company, Prestige Weather. We're closing out an amazing year with so many happy customers. If you're looking for more than the generic hourly or daily forecast that can be so frustrating and very broad, look no further than Prestige Weather. We help out individuals and businesses alike. If you're an individual looking for better, more accurate, and direct weather information, be sure to subscribe to our standard package. That's only $4.99 a month. You get early access to direct weather, seasonal, and monthly forecasts, also weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with us talking about the weather, and regional forecasts cater to your area. If you're a business, organization, or event manager, be sure to email us at prestigeweather at gmail.com or use the sign-up sheet on our website business section. We would love to work with you. We've been helping out so many businesses, organizations, and events just like yours plan for the weather ahead. We offer consulting calls, texts, and emails cater to your exact location of need. We will be on standby during your job or event and give you updates from start to finish. We also offer long range, medium range, and short range forecasts. We can help with rainfall and snowfall forecasts plus the timing of onset and ending which is so important. We pride ourselves on being highly flexible and we're always willing to deliver on your specific needs. Put a meteorologist in your pocket so you no longer have to guess what the weather will do. Now I'm adding temperature anomalies because in yesterday's video on the main channel it went all the way past 20 minutes which is just a little bit long so I want to cut the content down a little bit and bring some of it over to this channel whenever possible or necessary and in this case I think it's pretty necessary so we're going to be going over that today let's dive into things I mean obviously things have been quite warm no surprise there December went down as a very very warm month and actually my business partner over at Prestige weather predicted a very warm December with a colder January and February and I have to commend him on that that was an excellent prediction because uh, so far that is looking to be the case and for sure on the front end for December that was the case so pretty solid prediction there if I do say so myself now let's keep going with this we do have some pretty transient cold air in the east especially the southeast here as you can see that is moving through now Cold can happen for a couple of reasons, one of which would be if there's a cold air mass moving in, obviously. But there's another one that people don't think about, and if storms move through frequently, that can also cool down the temperatures because, for one thing, it's very cloudy and the sun doesn't get through, so that does tend to cool things down. But not only that, the rainfall or snowfall, depending in either case, it, it does cool down temperatures as well. So if there's very, very above average precipitation and storminess, that can also drive down temperatures. I think that this is actually both happening here in El Nino's. We do have a frequent storm track coming through here, and this does tend to cool things down for these southeast areas in El Nino's. A little bit drier to the north so far, and that's why we're seeing warmer temps up there. Uh, but really, the main cause is that we don't have any Arctic air in the area. That's that's the most major thing right now that is causing things to be much warmer for most areas in the east, especially, again, the further north you go. Things are looking quite cool for the 4th into the 5th, and actually, uh, we're not looking at any storms today, but there is some potential uh, activity happening in here, especially a little bit of snowfall maybe, especially in the mountainous regions for the Smoky Mountains, the Southern Appalachian Mountains in general. There is some chance at seeing some flakes fly as we have these colder temperatures in place overnight from the 4th to the 5th, and also um, we just have that storm moving through that area. So th those two pieces come together and bring some potential snowfall. Very, very minor though, but still snowfall nevertheless. Let's keep going with this though. Because we will actually have a little bit of a brief warm-up, although around the 7th and 8th, I mean, we get cold air along the East Coast. Things are looking quite warm, but it's after all of this is said and done that we mostly have this colder air moving in here, as you can see. And it's interesting because this Arctic air, instead of coming from Eastern Canada down into the United States, we can actually see that the source of this is coming from Western Canada 
and moving eastward. And the importance of this is something that I've talked about a little bit over the last few days, but we have a very, very lackluster amount of snowfall and ice in these areas. So as these air masses move over the eastern Canada and northern United States and the eastern side of things, we end up seeing these cooldowns become less and less potent before they move into the southern regions. And by the time they get there, they're very, very weak in nature compared to what we've seen in years past. But there happens to be excellent snow totals and excellent ice over these areas. And this helps to bring much more potent cold air if it's coming from this kind of western axis more like. And look at how potent this is over time, guys. Uh, definitely looking at severely below normal temperatures as we approach the midpoint of the month, according to this model. I want to say that, you know, preface it with that, that I am not calling for that to for sure happen. But right now on this model, which happens to be our American GFS model, we do actually see quite cold temperatures. And this is somewhat expected and has been expected because of one of my previous videos on this channel. We mentioned about that event happening over the Arctic Circle called a SSW and we saw warmer temperatures over that Arctic Circle encourage colder air to move down into these more middle areas uh, in the northern hemisphere and that happens to be the eastern United States in this case. Uh, anywhere in these greens is 10 to 15 degrees below normal Fahrenheit. These blues in here, these purplish blues that is, that's going to be 15 to 25 degrees below normal according to this model. And the magentas are going to be 25 degrees or more below normal, which is obviously a massive, massive departure from what's typical. Now, you might be wondering, okay, it's the GFS model. You know, a lot of people have negative feelings towards the GFS model. So is that the only model showing this or do we have actual support from some more reliable sources? This is your European ensemble model. And to many people, this is going to be your best bet looking long range or medium to long range, that is. Uh, and we're going to take a look here. We get warmer temperatures, cooler temperatures at time. It's this very transitional pattern. But again, after about the 10th, as we approach the 15th, we get colder air moving down into the United States. And for being 324 hours out right here, this is pretty solid signals at some pretty deep cold in the east. We're talking about 20 plus members in this ensemble model coming up to a mean average. So when you have these types of levels of cold showing up this far out, in this case, the green here, that is telling me that a vast majority of these models within this ensemble are calling for deep cold in the east. So this is looking highly confident as far as ensemble models go. And certainly we have ensemble support behind what the GFS is showing in the long range. Again, 10th, 15th, 20th time frame, looking much, much colder than what we saw in December and even colder than what we're expecting here during the first week or so of January. Things are looking to get colder and colder as time goes on, according to these models as of now. We've seen things be wacky. For instance, it goes both ways. You know, I... The other night, I went to bed and the models weren't showing much of anything over the first week of January. I woke up the next morning and we had the GFS model and the European model in perfect agreement for a major snowstorm on January 7th with perfect ensemble support with the European ensemble and the GFS ensemble model showing a lot of snowfall there in the east with that particular system. So we went overnight from seeing nothing to having an amazing signal, probably the best storm signal you could possibly have seven days out for a snowstorm along the east. And sure enough, that is what we've seen transpire. So certainly big things can change in a hurry according to these models. So don't be surprised by anything, I guess is what I'm saying when we're looking beyond five days out, especially. Let's go ahead and talk about these uh, snowfall. Well, we're going to talk about this real quickly. This is that SSW I was talking about. So I want to just kind of break it down for you. These Arctic Circle areas, when we have these warmer temperatures, it displaces the cold that normally would be in the Arctic. In this case, it sends it towards Europe. It sends it towards kind of Asia and Western, um, or I guess that'd be uh, Eastern Russia there. So definitely very, very intense cold air moving away. And then in this case, the Western United States. But as we move this on, we're going to see everything kind of just move along kind of uh, counterclockwise here. And we see this cold pretty much trending towards Eastern United States over time uh, right there. So definitely looking very cold there, very cold over Europe. And then now we have some, some of this Northern Pacific area seeing some of that cold as well. But again, it's all moving away from that Arctic Circle. So we see the Arctic air displacing away from where it would normally be. Just 
like that. Definitely very interesting stuff if you ask me. So let's go ahead and talk about the total snowfall. This is probably why a lot of you are watching this video. I'm going to advertise it in my direct weather video today. I'm uploading this video first, of course, so I have somewhere to send you guys, but I wanted to get this additional information out. This is that massive snowstorm we were talking about, and I want to back it up because this is actually the total snowfall from storm one right here. And then there's actually a second storm on this model run. So we can see anywhere in the grays of dusting, if anything, blues are two to six inches, purple six to 10, and then pinks are 10 to 20. And we can see we push really high towards 20 in a lot of areas. I mean, most of these areas are experiencing 15 to 20. And even here in northeastern Pennsylvania, somewhere up there, we are experiencing over 20 inches of snowfall, as you can see in this pastel blue. So that's going to be about 23.2 inches on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can see the maximum snowfall anywhere on this graphic. And I can tell you right now, it's somewhere in there. Uh, where we're experiencing nearly two feet of snowfall from this singular storm on this model. So certainly looking very major here. And then we actually get a second storm here, as you can see, that follows it up. And I'll try to get that one uh, by itself, the second storm here. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't think we can do that. So, or yeah, let's go back. We have to go to this model run here. Doing a little bit of a improv, uh, improv here. Let's see. So we get, basically what we have happen is we have a primary low here. This one moves northward. And that's why we get the majority of the snowfall over the Ohio Valley here and the Great Lakes. And we get a bit of a secondary low here, which I'm going to underline the primary one. So you can remember which one's the primary one. But this one also moves offshore and we get some cold air around it. Enough to where we get some mountainous eastern snow, snowfall here from this storm. The majority of which though is happening over Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan there. Uh, that's really the bullseye of that second storm. But in the main channel, we talked about how a lot of this energy from our primary low is going to transfer to this eastern one. And really, there's a lot of variations of this that can happen. It's still very long range, so keep that in mind as well. But if this one ends up being the primary low, you can expect to see these totals really, really ramp up on this eastern end. But if this low actually ends up looking even stronger over time, you're going to see these amounts really get cut down over time. So there's a lot of variables at play for that storm afterwards. It's a very classic setup, but it's one of those nail biters where we're going to be really debating what's going to end up happening up until the last minute if this storm ends up happening. So I am hoping it happens. For me, that's the more interesting situations, the highly debatable, highly unpredictable systems. Uh, this first one is a little bit easier. I would say with the first system, in case you're curious, the main thing I'm concerned about as far as changes is going to be this main area of snowfall, which we're going to draw it in. Something like this is where we're expecting a majority of that snowfall to happen. This can shift northeast, south, or west. This can shift around. And that's my biggest concern. You know, we tend to see northwest trends with these systems when they're this far out uh, over time. So over the coming days, I'm going to be watching for a, a shift. Uh, in, in where this storm is expected to go. It could stay where it's at. It could even trend southward, but it's really classic for these models to over time trend it northwest. So I am a little bit concerned about that and it has me uh, kind of taking this with a grain of salt despite the great agreement we see from the models, despite the ensemble model showing uh, great support for this system. You're going to want to watch for those directional shifts over the coming days. And of course, here on both channels, we're going to be doing that as well. So keep that in mind. But when it's all put together, we expect to see uh, quite a bit of snowfall here in the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley and Northeast. And then even the Midwest here, which we're going to be watching as well, the Midwest and Great Lakes uh, for that second storm. So there's the European model. Here's the GFS model. We can see a stark difference. Look at how far south this GFS model is compared to the Euro. We get a lot less over New England, certainly seeing some snowfall, but a lot less. And then the upper Midwest and Great Lakes just gets bombed from this second system, seeing feet of snowfall. So definitely the GFS has this low as the majority primary low by far compared to this coastal one. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is the first storm alone. So again, really looking minimal for New England. So there is some things that are still highly debated um, according to these models and things that are not completely put together yet. But again, when it's all said and done, everybody kind of cashes in on pretty heavy snowfall. The Canadian model has a lot closer of a result here to the European model where we see again that Appalachian mountain range seeing the majority here. A little bit less coastal with it, perhaps some mixing issues near the coast here on the 
Canadian model where you can see less snowfall towards the coast. Certainly something to watch. And then we get a widespread snowfall event here for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes on this one as well. Now here's the national blend of models. This model tries to kind of take all of them and put them together. So I figured we'd look at this one as well. It has the same effect as, your, as an ensemble model. And what I mean by that is likely this is pretty conservative because it's taking the mean average of all of them. So you're getting all the storms like the GFS, for instance, it's considering that the GFS is showing none for here, but a ton for here. Um, that's going to lower the total mean average that we see up here. Whereas if you took the GFS out of the equation, you'd see a lot more for this area according to this output. So pretty interesting tool here. Still, I mean, even I think a lot of people would be happy with this even. This is a great 6 to 10, maybe 6 to 12 inch snowfall event from Virginia and West Virginia up through Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, even northern Jersey there, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine as well. So classic northeast snowstorm on this blend of models as well. And here's an interesting one. We're going to take a look at this. We can't get the east, so we're going to have to just kind of imagine here and, uh, look really closely but when we just do the first storm here this is called spire um, i'm looking into this you know weather bell is what we use here on the channel and they've just added this tool so i'm pretty curious about it but this particular model keeps the snowstorm way further south and way weaker but this is a huge outlier at this point this is the only model that i see showing this keep that in mind but as we always say on the channel if a model is showing it and even if it's not i mean anything is possible there's nothing new under the sun so we have to consider this as possibility as well a very minimalistic opinion but let's watch the storm actually roll through i know i was i said i wasn't going to do precipitation type but here we are doing it you can see this system just stays so far south and really the only areas that see snowfall is going to be virginia west virginia maybe maryland so basically the mid-atlantic and it goes ahead and moves out innocently uh, without really causing too much impacts and then we get a lot of snowfall in the upper midwest and great lakes from this second storm but nothing for the east coast for the most part as it's all pretty much rain so this is kind of the bummer model of the day here today i'm sure nobody's happy unless you live in you know wisconsin or michigan here about this output i would say that uh, now here's the ensemble models I'm going to actually zoom these into the east so we can get a better perspective. But this is what I mean when I say we have great support. Again, this is just like the temperature one. We have about 20 different models here. And then it puts it together and we get the mean average of all of them. So when we're looking at a storm that's five to seven days out and we have this high of totals, that tells me that these models, a vast majority, if not all of them, are showing a heavy snowstorm the way that the European and the GFS model are showing it as well. So great ensemble support for that matter. We also get great amounts of snowfall for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes due to that second storm here. And then look at the GFS ensemble model. I'm going to zoom it in and compare. So let's go back here. And then here's the GFS ensemble model. I mean, we still have very large amounts here over the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. Still very large amounts here from the Mid-Atlantic up through the Northeast. So amazing agreement here as well. And then as the bonus, again, I told you we're going over every single model here, but here is that Canadian ensemble model. So European ensemble model, GFS ensemble model, and then your Canadian ensemble model. We can tell that all three of these look really, really good uh, and in great agreement. So we have heavy snowfall for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, as well as the Ohio Valley. And then again, mid-Atlantic up through the Northeast. So we get this on all three ensemble models. They all look very similar. And I would say this is the highest confidence you can ask for from these models this far out. So certainly this is as perfect of a storm signal as you can possibly get for the range that we're talking about. So definitely a lot to look forward to. We're definitely watching it closely on both channels and in prestige weather so we're going to keep an eye on all of these situations for you guys be sure to subscribe to this channel i plan on uploading a couple times a week over here with bonus content so make sure to subscribe and keep up to date with it you can hit that bell icon for those notifications as well also like the video and leave a comment down below with your thoughts i'll see you guys in the next one